Specifically, three big names are set to take the stage this week as they report their latest earnings, specifically within technology. Uh, we've got four listed here, Microsoft, Tesla, and Intel, uh, IBM as well. First off, we've got Microsoft results out tomorrow. The street is looking for a year-over-year decline in its earnings as the company faces macroeconomic headwinds. I, I mean, before we sort of go through the, each of them individually, I think it, it would behoove us to talk about sort of big picture what we're looking at here. We're all going to have weak fourth quarters, right? We know this. Really what the focus is going to be on is on the outlook um, from these companies. Um, revenue growth is going to be an issue for them as well. So what are they predicting for this year? Are some of the cuts that these companies have been making, how immediately is that going to uh, flow through to the bottom line? But on the top line, what are they going to be seeing? How bad is the demand decline going to be for many of these companies? That's what we're going to look for in terms of big picture commentary. Yeah, uh, Good note uh, out this morning from Brent Thill over at Jefferies. In addition to trying to get a sense on how earnings may be impacted uh, from this recent round of layoffs, Brent is saying by 2024, uh, Microsoft could see a 30 cent boost to earnings from this just this round of layoffs. But he's very focused on the Azure, the growth rate in that cloud services business. The past two quarters, sales have missed analyst estimates. Given the layoff news, you would think they saw further growth in this current quarter. So that would be the third potential sales miss uh, for Microsoft and Azure. And the market may not like to see that. Yeah, and, and with Tesla coming out this week, too, I think for as much emphasis as there has been around this EV evolution that Tesla, sure, has prompted for many households to even think about considering owning an EV. Now it just comes down to the deliveries and, and the production that they're going to be looking for to stabilize, uh, not just here in the U.S., but of course, uh, internationally, you think about the shutdowns that have had to take place and now removing some of those shutdowns and just trying to make sure that they're keeping those operations open. Uh, that's going to be extremely important, but just making sure that customers take delivery at the end of that, too. Uh, that has been in focus for Wall Street as well coming into this report. And for Tesla, as you read about in this morning's Morning Brief, how long are the price cuts going to last, right? Yes. That's something that yeah. the street wants visibility on as well. I mean, they probably also want to know how long the madness of Twitter is going to last, but I can't imagine they're going to get any visibility um, in that in that department at all. Well, we'll maybe have a little more clarity on this, Brad. We're supposed to go live yes. after the Tesla earnings call ends, hopefully before 8 p.m., because that's going to be a long day. But stay on Yahoo Finance. We'll, uh, me and Brad, be providing that instant analysis. I'm looking forward to that, uh, for sure. And all of our viewers should tune into that. Just quickly, too, we've got some big credit card operating and transactions processors reporting this week. That could be amazingly critical. Just to track up against what the Fed... Uh, Reserve of New York has already pointed out in household debt uh, rising to more than $16 trillion. And then uh, what that also means for the household debt and credit, we've seen the largest 15%, it was a 15% year over year increase in credit card balances, the largest in more than 20 years here. And so you just get an insight into how the consumer is faring right now too, perhaps with some of these reports. And, and one other one that we should mention, well, IBM we're going to dig into a little bit later on with Lisa Ellis, but uh, Intel as well, mm. you know, how much pain are we still seeing in the semiconductor industry? That's going to be a key report to tell us where we are in the inventory cycle, right? And it is going to be different depending on the kinds of chip makers. In fact, um, coming up at the opening bell, we're going to cover a note that talks about the chip makers and kind of that depending on what kinds of chips they make, maybe right. they're in different parts of this cycle. So that could be interesting too when we talk about Intel. I know you watch Intel closely, so. The vibe is that Intel may reset its guidance one last time, and then maybe that might be the buying opportunity. Again, that's not me saying buy the stock, but I think that's what the chatter is. The chatter is going into this earnings yes. report for well, Intel. One more thing to mention when we talk about Microsoft, by the way, the company just as expected announcing that it is making a multi-billion a dollar investment in open AI, a further investment in addition to what it has already done. And one of the other things we talked about a lot in Davos that you're going to talk about more later in the show, I'm doing a lot of teases right now. Yeah, you really are. Can't keep up. Is, um, is ChatGPT and the importance of AI mm -hmm. and in particular conversational AI for many of these companies. How much of a growth driver is this going to be for Microsoft going forward? I think there are going to be some questions about this on the call, even if it's not, you know, a na this quarter or even next quarter, what is this going to mean for Microsoft going forward? It's going to be really an interesting conversation. Anything else to tease? We got I'm going to eat maybe a hot dog later on in the show. I don't know. In, during no, the kidding. show? I'm just joking. I'm just kidding. Just yeah. kidding. Just I'm kidding. looking forward to that. JK. I can say the week over week brunch chat indicator would say that AI is top of mind for <laughs> a lot of brunchers <laughs> out there. Yes. Interesting. Anecdata there. <laughs>